Hi friends, I'm Steven and this is my channel Signal Up Productions where I make videos all about trains. Recently I visited a model railroad, an HO scale layout over near Indianapolis and while I was there I took my GoPro camera and took some video clips while I was running my train. In just a minute I'm going to show you the clips that I took and explain a little bit about the layout and uh, what was taking place in the operation. But before I do, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and click that subscription button for me and while you're at it, uh, maybe go ahead and click the bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new video. So we're going to get into the video clips right now and I'm going to explain what was taking place. Alright, so the clips that I started first with, uh, I actually had left the yard and ran to the industrial area before I started video recording. Uh, so we start with me running the, the Union Pacific Jeep engine uh, pushing a scrap gondola into the scrap yard uh, and after I'd already picked up a few of my other cars from uh, some of the other tracks. Uh, there are places along the layout, the industrial spurs, where there's uncoupling magnets between the track, but uh, occasionally I needed to uncouple the cars where there was not a magnet, so I used a skewer stick. Those are located around the layout to help with picking the knuckles apart. The layout uses NCE for their command station, so I was using a, a wireless NCE utility throttle. Uh, uh, the entire layout is uh, about a 600 foot long main line. Most of it is a double track. As you can see, that signal bridge there protects the crossovers. There is a dispatcher office, and the dispatcher has a computer screen that allows him to see all of the occupied track along the main line. Uh, he can also remotely control the crossover switches and then line signals to uh, permit trains operating from one location to the other. So I've uh, hooked back up to some of the cars that I picked up out of the back track earlier, moving them up past the crossover. I do have the crossover in manual control using this toggle switch right here. Uh, that takes it out of CTC mode and then allows me to throw the switch manually. That way the dispatcher is not having to keep doing that for me. When the crossover is in manual mode, it makes all of the signal lights uh, blink, flashing red indication to let the operator know that it is in manual mode. So I've got it in manual mode. I'm crossing over from the passing siding that I'm in across the main over into the industry to pick my caboose back up there. I got it in the wrong position and I'll have to set that black gondola out back onto the track later. And I stopped over a magnet but it didn't really want to it didn't want to work for me so I ended up having to use the bamboo skewer to get that joint uncoupled. When magnets work they work great uh, but they don't always work and so having a backup method of uncoupling cars is always handy. Now moving forward, I've got a few other cars that I have to pick up and they're on a facing point industry. So even though my train is behind me, I need to uh, pull up down the spur to the uh, industries and dig out the cars that I need. First, I'm gonna grab the short little black tank car there at the back of that spur, but this two bay covered hopper is in my way. So I have to hook onto it and then go back and hook up to the tank car that I need, move the tank car over to an empty track, and then respot the two bay hopper. And a lot of the industri industrial switching jobs on this layout are, are much like this, where uh, it's a little bit of a puzzle. Uh, you often have to move cars around to get to the cars you need. It adds some challenges to the operation and helps slow things down.
And of course, on a model railroad, everything's make believe and the points don't matter. So occasionally I might just have to move a car manually, push it up out of the way, especially if it's on a hill to try and get it to stay in place while I um, get the, uh, the car that I don't need moved back into the spot it originally was in. So that's something to make, uh, keep in mind when you're switching cars. Any cars that you move that aren't scheduled to be picked up, be sure and spot them back to where they originally went. So I've got the tank car I need. I also need that turquoise cover, covered uh, high cube box car back there. So thankfully I can just go up and grab it. I didn't have to dig it out. All right, so I've pulled those cars off the spur they are on and then into the runaround track. Then I'm able to uh, get around them on the other side and uh, shove them down into, um, on the siding to the rest of my train. You'll notice the level of detail on this layout is tremendous. Um, everywhere you look, there's a little story, something going on. The layout owner, his name was Dan. I discovered his layout operating session was uh, posted on a website called operatingsessions.com. I was able to sign up an account on that website and then register for his operating session. Took about a three and a half hour drive from where I live in southern Illinois over to Indiana. But I made it kind of a rail fan day and was able to follow along some railroad tracks. So while I'm getting done with my switching job, the uh, dispatcher needed the uh, control point back that I was using for my switch moves so he could route this freight train around me. So that train's going to go on. I'm actually done with my work, so I'm going to call the dispatcher on the telephone, let him know that I'm done here at Lynchburg and uh, was ready to head back west to Havana Yard, which is where I originally started from. While we wait for the dispatcher to give us a signal, I admire some of the details around here. We've got a shop facility with some welders and then a trailer park with some inappropriate activity taking place. And we have the cops show up to settle things out. As my train descends down the hill, uh, we come out at Cliff Junction onto the main line. The signals add a nice level of realism to operations. It makes it much easier for a dispatcher to coordinate the movement of so many trains that they, um, they don't get a hoarse voice giving out track warrants or timetable form 19s or anything like that. They can just click a signal and as long as the uh, system is working correctly, it'll uh, give a green signal. The train can proceed on the indication. So as I come down the hill here, you see some track crew out here working on the connection track. Pass by one of the many industrial switching areas on the layout. Dispatcher crosses me over, uh, I believe crossing me over to the main, and then up ahead I'll get stopped at the next signal to cross back over to the yard. Main line, or all the track on the layout actually is uh, painted. Um, I didn't notice any areas of the layout that were not scenic, so I would say the layout is just about, or is 100% scenic. And you can see the photo backdrop on the tunnel portal to give some depth as the, uh, the road goes through the tunnel, even though that's uh, actually just uh, a wall there. 
And we can kind of look around at the industrial area I just got done switching, just to see the size and arrangement of all the different track spurs that are located there. Right, the dispatcher's got me a signal to cross over, so I'm going to do that. Head into the yard and start putting my cars away in the different yard tracks they go on. The main line is about 600 feet long and um, it can handle in upwards of 15 different train crews operating their trains around the layout. Many different industrial switching areas, several different yards for classifying and blocking cars for different trains, transfer jobs, uh, unit coal trains and chemical trains. So this is Havana Yard. This is actually where I started out uh, with my train originally. I went to Lynchburg with six cars and spotted them at the Industries, and then I pulled five uh, to head back to Lynchburg. Half of these cars are destined for eastbound terminals. They'll actually go on track number four, I believe. And then the other cars are destined for westbound, and they'll go on track five. So I... Uh, I cut my caboose off here on track three, and then I can pull down the yard lead and start sorting my cars. This, the, the layout uses a very simple car card system uh, that doesn't identify a specific car, but rather a specific type of car. For instance, a food grade tank car or a flat car, 50 foot, excuse me, a, a specifically a 50 foot flat car is different than a 40 foot flat car as far as the car system is concerned. A uh, 40 foot box car is different than a 40 foot high cube box car. So it just specifies an exact type of car, not a specific car number or reporting marks. Cars work their way around the layout using these car cards, telling uh, the crews uh, what the next destination is for that car. Then once it reaches its destination, the uh, way bill that's inside the plastic sleeve is reversed to facilitate starting the whole process over again. If at any time the um, layout owner wants to you know, mix things up, you can put in new waybills that assign a different type of car to a different industry. It was a very easy operating scheme to understand and it made coming to the layout for the first time enjoyable because I wasn't stressed about being able to understand a complex operating method. I've been in operations for most of my life participating in this hobby and I've uh, had the privilege to operate on dozens of layouts around the country um, and each one's a little bit different and they all have their areas that uh, work really well and it make the layout enjoyable to visit and to run trains on. Dan's layout here was no exception to that. I believe he told me he started this layout about 30 years ago in Michigan and then has made a couple of moves to different areas of the country to where he is now and each time he gets a little more space so he adds on to the layout a little bit more. Communicating with the dispatcher is done through the use of wireless telephones that are not hooked up to the phone network. Instead using the intercom feature of um, the wireless phones. So when it was time to communicate with the dispatcher, it was just a few button clicks away with the cordless phone to call them up. And then the chat was very prototypical-like. Train H2 at Lynchburg, ready to head east back to Havana Yard for yard switching. OK, look for a light. And then we'd hang up, and he'd go on to the next, uh, next call. All right, so I've got all my train cars spotted into the yard tracks where they go for their blocks of eastbound or westbound. And um, 
I uh, line the switches back and head back to get my caboose. Um, the switches on the layout each throw a little bit different. The mainline switches use uh, tortoise machines underneath, and those are the ones the dispatcher is able to control from his dispatcher panel. Then some of the harder to reach switches in the industrial area may be a mix, uh, or generally a mix of um, tortoise machines that are hooked up to toggle switches. In the case of the yard lead here at Havana, it uses this push button system and it uses a uh, matrix to line all of the switches needed from the yard ladder there to the appropriate track it needs to go to. So you just push the button for the track you want and it lines all the switches accordingly. So we've completed our run. I'm going to put the engine and caboose back on the, uh, the track where I originally got it from at the beginning of my run. And that's, uh, that's it for the operations on this layout. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures around the layout that uh, I took uh, before the operating session got started. And you'll notice this um, door right here. Uh, it's a uh, swing door, a uh, swing bridge. And, and because it's a double level swing bridge, it's it's impossible to see if there is a train on the lower track from the back side of this. So there's this uh, railroad, yellow railroad crossing sign on the back side, and it's hooked up to a set of flashing lights. If the dispatcher has a train routed across that, uh, that track, then those lights are flashing. And if there's nothing planned to, to come through there, then there's no lights flashing, which permits a person from, or allows a person to open up the, uh, the swing day, gate and go into the layout area. Once you're inside the layout area, everything that you need as far as following your train or reaching any switching areas are all from inside, so there's no need to duck under uh, different peninsulas or run around um, to a different side of the layout to catch back up to a train if it goes through a wall or anything like that. So that was very convenient. And the layout height was a comfortable uh, level of, above the floor. Not too high, but not too low. There was um, foam mats on the floor to add some cushion so that uh, if you were standing all day running on a train, your feet were not, hopefully, not throbbing at the end of the operating session. There were some stools around to uh, permit a person to sit down if they had a switching job at a single location for uh, any length of time. So that was also handy if a person needed that. And it was just a very relaxed, um, very relaxed operating session. Everybody was uh, so kind to allow me to come and participate with their group and the, the layout owner, Dan, as well, for uh, extending the opportunity to me to be able to come up and uh, participate with their uh, with the way they do things. And that's it for this video. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, look at that website, operating, uh, operatingsessions.com. And, uh, you know, if you are into operations and you want to travel to different people's layouts and see what they have done, you should go ahead and sign up for that and see if there are any upcoming events in your local area. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends if you think they would enjoy it. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if there's uh, something about this layout that was similar to what you do on your layout. Uh, if there's anything that maybe give you a good idea on something you might change on your layout. Uh, anything like that. Go ahead and leave those in the comments down below. We will see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.